Hi, my name is Lucy Calipari Marcuzzo and welcome to iHeart Art. Uh, in this episode we're going to be um, working with charcoal and graphite and continuing the exploration with still life uh, using these uh, antique bottles that I picked up at, a, um, at an op shop. So these four objects are very interesting, different shapes. What I've done is on the page is I have taken a photograph of the objects together and held up a white uh, piece of paper behind them just to get um, a clean shot and made a copy of that, just printed it off black and white. And then what I've done is I also have a piece of tracing paper and you can get all sorts of different kinds of tracing paper from um, office works or any office supply shop or art shop. This one particular that I like to use is basically graphite pencil or grey lead um, on like a wax paper, like a baking paper. So you could you know, possibly even do that at home with a grey lead and some, um, some of your kitchen baking paper. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I've done is just quickly traced around the outline, placed the, the tracing paper with the face, with the, um, the graphite side down to the paper, um, and then the image on top. So I've just quickly traced around um, the objects just so that I have a reference point for my drawing. Um, so in previous episodes, uh, we've used homemade pigments um, that you can find in your cupboard, fridge, uh, garden even, uh, pantry, freezer, and also we've, we've used um, lots of colour. So watercolours um, uh, and um, markers that you can find from an art shop or an office supply. So for this one, we're just going to stick with monochrome. So just um, basically um, black and white and shades of grey. So I've quickly um, blocked out the outlines of those objects and now I'm going to take that away. And I'm going to do something different in that I have a solid graphite stick that um, I purchased from an art shop. But you can get you know, something like this, a solid graphite piece of graphite or charcoal from any, um, you know, you can get these from, um, from thrift shops too now. So it's, um, art materials are available anywhere, not just specialist art supply shops, which is fantastic. So you can pick up charcoal pencils, charcoal, you know, kits of charcoal from anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I have a solid piece of graphite and I'm going to basically cover this page with the graphite. I can still see the faint outline of my drawing underneath. Why am I going to do this? You will see. <laughs> so instead of working as we would normally do, I'm going to take away. I'm going to start with like a grey uh, surface and then go back in with my eraser. I have a number of erasers here. So I have this kneadable eraser that I've bought from an art shop. But again, you can also buy these from um, office supply shops and also thrift shops. They've got them. I also have another type of eraser. I have a myriad of erasers. I love art supplies. I have a problem. Um, and also this um, black one, uh, which is apparently dust free. So that just means you haven't got bits of eraser on the bottom of your page. So I've grayed that out and now I'm going to use my fingers and rub it. So I'm just smudging. Smudging, so still nothing really happening, although there, there, is, there is stuff happening underneath. And I can still see my faint line. I've got some tissue here, so um, if you don't want to you know, get graphite or charcoal on your fingers, you can also do this with charcoal. You can use the tissue. Um, and rub it in that way. And you get a bit more of a variation in grey uh, with the tissue there. Now with my eraser, I have this, um, what's called a kneadable one. You could, I suppose if you weren't able to get a kneadable eraser, you could also use something like blue tack or something like that, um, which has similar properties. And I'm going to go back in and take away and I'm removing some colour, but I see that that's really faint. So what I'm going to do is get my pencil 
So you can also get these from thr um, from anywhere now, thrift shops as well. These are solid um, graphite, pieces of graphite. So they're basically a similar thing. And I'm going to just go in where the shape of that object was and put that back in. And, uh, and I like to just uh, create the suggestion of the object, so it's not necessarily a um, realistic depiction. But you can do that. If that's your thing, you can do that. So I've got this little um, bottle there, and I probably should be looking at it to get a bit of reference, and I can just go back in and have a look at some of the detail. Okay, so just going around where the little screw top is. So there would have been a screw top there at some point. What you can actually do as well, um, because I have that reference point and the paper, is you can place it back over the top to find your objects again, which might be a good idea in this case. And I've just got this same material. It may work, it may not. Yep, so I've got a bit of a, a line there, a bit of a reference point. So if for some reason, if the objects disappear, um, you can, you know, put them back in. Because the beauty with uh, graphite and charcoal is that it's not completely permanent. You can always go back in and rework it um, until the objects are revealed. So I might just place that over the top again. And again, this is the beauty of things because um, things don't always work out the way you think they're going to. So the serendipity of creating art is part of the fun and the challenge. So I'm just going back in over the top and just adding some details with that uh, piece of tracing paper that I had that, you know, um, is helping because I've just seen that I have a line there that I missed. So I can see the line and I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in like a heavy shadow around the back of that outline. So that will appear more obvious in the artwork. Okay, I'm gonna keep working on this part of my drawing and I'll see you after the break. I just need that, that little bit of extra definition. This one is hiding in amongst the smudging that I'd done. Yep, and there it is. It has reappeared. So around the outside, I'm putting in a bit of the shadow around the back. So hopefully you can see the shapes appearing or reappearing. They were there and they disappeared and now they're back again. And I'm just using some vertical strokes, lines, straight lines, up and down. And what that does is the darkness um, just brings forward these grey shapes that were disappearing behind. They'd all merged into one. So I'm just going to go back and pop that shape back in. And what, I want, what I'm wanting to do is to create some light and shadow, some interest rather than, you know, I could have kept it all grey. Um, it would have been very bland or just tonal. So now I can see the shapes again. I'm just going to go back and do what I did before and just pop in a bit of that dark shadow. I find these little um, bottles really interesting because they've got um, you know, quite a bit of patina. They're obviously old. There's stuff in there that I wasn't going to wash out because, you know, that's the beauty of it. It's just got a bit of variation. 
if you wanted to, after you know using you know the monochrome, you can just go back and pick out just little um, you know highlights of colour, perhaps a tiny bit of brown or a bit of grey, you know grey blue. So I'm just going to continue to use some um, with the graphite piece of graphite also um, known as a progresso stick but essentially it's a it's a solid piece of graphite it doesn't have its woodless uh, graphite pencil so I'm just going around there and I also had like a little uh, horizon line behind there just to it was sitting on a table so just to give it a bit of sense of that it was sitting on something and it's not floating in the air. But if that's what you want to do with your drawing, that's, you know, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay, so it's still looking pretty grey. The kneadable eraser can also smudge, you know, create some smudges. And with my finger, I said before, I was smudging, getting some greys into the, into the bottle shape. And I can go back in and just create some lighter, you know, points of interest. Perhaps it's the light, you know, where the light's hitting the bottles. And you can go back to your reference photo as well if you're not comfortable with using uh, the objects from life. I also have um, these little stumps, they're paper stumps. So it's just essentially a big blob of paper, compacted paper. And again, you can get these at uh, thrift shops as well now, which is fantastic. You can buy them in a kit with some with charcoal. And what it essentially does is it's like, you know, you can you can smudge, go in and smudge and not get your hands all dirty, even though you do end up doing that. So getting your hands dirty is fun as well. So it's it really creates an easier way of applying pressure to get the grey grey outside. So you can see even that the residual charcoal on um, the tip, you can still keep drawing with that. So that's the beauty of, of that. It ends up kind of being like an, um, an extension to your drawing. So it's still looking pretty grey. Luckily I have lots of different stuff in my kit. So I have a piece of um, compressed charcoal. So I'm going to use that because that's You'll notice once I put, pop that down, it is a, um, a definite black. So it just lifts the grey and creates a bit of definition in amongst that grey. So I'm just going to go around those outside shapes. You know, I'm kind of, in a way, I'm reimagining what the shapes look like because I'm not completely working from life. However, I am going to hold one up. So, you know, I'm having a look at it. You know, what's the shape? And then I'm going to pick up this one, you know, um, which is a lovely round shape. It's slightly irregular, it looks like it's been broken. Again, you know, use just get, don't be afraid to get in there and use your fingers. Um, just be careful because I tend to, you know, go in and use my fingers and then I've accidentally touched my face so I end up with charcoal on my nose usually um, uh, so always good to check your reflection upon leaving the house after you've been drawing with charcoal or anything really creating um, anything really so you should be able to hopefully see the objects appearing grab the um, paper stump and work in where I have used the black charcoal. And so that, what, what that has done now is it's, it's kind of uh, not erasing the lines, but blending in the lines so that you've got more of a solid, um, solid colour. And the, the black then kind of blends in with the graphite to create shades of, of grey, you know, the, the tonal, a bit more tonal va variation. There's a bit of a detail here and like I said, I've got a bit of charcoal on the tip of this paper stump. So I'm going to just pop that back in. Just shadows and details that you can um, put back in. Of 
course, the master of still life with bottles was Modigliani. You know, perhaps it needs a bit more shadow. I also have um, some charcoal pencils as well. So some of these you can also buy them from anywhere. Graphite, actual graphite pencils, so grey leads in different grades. So a 5B is quite dark. HB is lighter. So a HB is, you know, basically the the grey lead pencil you're given when you go to school. And then the higher the number, usually the darker. So we're going in, putting some detail. So what I might do is now work on the four, uh, the foreground here. So what have I, what am I going to use? I also have, um, this is like a charcoal graphite pencil combination. I remember that in my my reference photo, um, I have some tiles. So that just gives me a bit of depth, you know, where you know, I can hold that up and think, okay, I can put a line in here and a line in um, over here. And then extend those, extend those lines out. It's not always going to be perfect. And that's the beauty of having an eraser because you can go back in. So I might just do some line work down here. So I'm also putting in some shadows underneath here as well. And they can be a bit more organic. And maybe your line could be a suggestion of movement. So it doesn't need to be linear. Perhaps it's more, you know, going around the outside. You know, perhaps it's almost like, you know, the shapes the, the, the objects have life, you know, have a life of their own, you know, they're not just, you know, sitting on a flat plane. You can really play around with, you know, with your, loose, your use of line. So I've got a, some sort of circular shapes happening around here, just to give it a bit of interest so it's not just so, you know, flat and straightforward. So I've got two different thicknesses of paper stumps. So I've got a thinner one, um, which is for more detail, um, that you can go in, you know, perhaps around the bottle if you're using the shadows or the little the lips and the lines uh, around there. We're going to take a short break and I'll see you soon. So I'm just going to go around you know, and it's, you notice my line work is quite, is a bit haptic. It's a bit kind of random and that's okay. That, that's giving the drawing a, a little bit of, I don't know, hopefully interest. The beauty of graphite and charcoal is that you can go in and use your eraser, remove areas of what you've laid down before and go back in and work over the top again, if that's what you want to do. Just going to put that line back in here, a more definite line, and then go back in behind these shapes, these objects, and make them a little bit more defined, and maybe here too. I'm going to use my eraser, as I said I could do that, and I'm going to rub that out, just adjust it. You can do this or you, 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 don't, you don't have to because it might not be important to your drawing. So I'm just going to put in a bit more of a dark shape. Okay, I'm just going to block in a bit more grey areas here. And then back with my uh, eraser. So I've got, as I mentioned, I've got a couple of different erasers. So I'm going to try this black one. And that really cuts back. It's cutting back into the, into the black. It's bringing the, the white back in. And what I want to do is put back in, whoops, some interest from the foreground that I had in my photo. So I can see that there's some, you know, light here. You know, have an experiment with your erasers. Maybe they're 
This one's not quite the right one. I need to get the softer one or your blue tack or whatever it is that you're using. You can pull that colour out. And then go back in again and add the dark back. Which is what I'm doing here. So back to this pencil. I'm just putting in the lines of the tiles that I know are there. Just to create a bit of interest, depth to the drawing. You know, you can work over this, you know, can work on this for 20 minutes, you can work on this for an hour, you can work on this today and come back to it tomorrow. Um, that's the beauty of it. You can just keep working, 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 even, even with other um, other mediums, you can you can always go back and continue to work on what it is that you've created. Um, that's the beauty of printing your reference photo in black and white. You can, you know, you've got more of a tonal range that you probably aren't going to be able to see with the objects in real life as well. So there's a bit more, you can see a bit more variation. Um, but it's always good to work from, you know, objects in life as well, just to um, get that sense of the space they take up, you know, how they sit in the space. Okay, I've had fun working with charcoal and graphite in this episode. In previous episodes, I've also shown you how you can experiment with homemade pigments that you can find in your fridge, freezer, cupboard, pantry or garden, and also colour inks and markers. So I hope you've had fun and I'll see you next time.